Hassan. Uh, 안녕하세요. 저는 Hassan입니다. 저는 한국에 오래 살고 있어요. Uh, but I would like to give this talk in English because that's uh, how I applied here. here. Uh, to tell you a little bit more about myself, uh, I came to Korea maybe five or six, six years ago. Uh, and I work as full stack engineer. So I change my roles like every year. Uh, I started Python three years ago uh, and web programming four years ago, pure HTML, no backend. Uh, and then, yeah, gradually I learned. Uh, nowadays I'm working full stack JavaScript uh, for Tizen, uh, like making TV applications, Node.js, and some React Native. And my hobbies are cycling, running, and hiking. And I speak Korean, but yeah, I will be speaking English today. And my native language is Urdu, and I can read Arabic. Yeah. So uh, this picture was taken uh, three years ago. <laughs> it was the first time I tried teaching Python. Uh, yeah, it, it was like it was okay, not that good. Uh, and before I start giving like more, uh, telling you about Django and other thing. This is the most important thing uh, about Python and Django community. That's why I joined here. Uh, it's about like diversity statement that whatever your race is, whatever your background is, you are welcome here. Even you're a woman, you're an old person, 70 years old, you're 13 years old, 14 years old, it doesn't matter. So that's one mission I want you to remind before listening to my presentation. Uh, two years ago, uh, in 2015, uh, we started Django Girls in Korea uh, uh, with a couple of friends here. And now we have Django Girls Daejeon. Django Girls Daegu is two weeks later. So it's kind of a movement which was started with a small community. Now it became very big. So maybe around 1,000 women were taught Django through these workshops in Korea. And uh, so, so the reason I learned Python was because of this professor. He had an online course on Coursera. He visited Korea last year and we got an opportunity to meet him and got signature on the certificate. So I really yeah, cherish this moment. And last year I was uh, giving a PyCon tutorial on Django. Uh, and yeah, I was using 50% Korean also. So I will share the link for last year tutorial also. It's in Korean and English. You can use that. Uh, yeah, and I do this kind of activity also. Yeah, it's, uh, I was the only man, all other women there. But yeah, I did okay. There's no video recording, so you will never know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and why I'm here? Uh, because this is the timeline of my programming career. Uh, my undergraduate was uh, electrical engineering. It's more like electronics and communication engineering. And I started C++ in 2004. Uh, then I moved to assembly, very log embedded system. And yeah, this is the time when I come to Korea in 2011. That's how when I started programming formally, uh, I didn't just start it with Java, like buying the book. I started with Android because it's more interesting to start with some project instead of just yeah, learning by, from base. So I started with Android, my first app, then I started learning Java with it also. And yeah, this is where I started Python uh, in 2014, I think, yeah, just before that. And yeah, I switched to different programming languages. Sometimes I was using in company, sometimes I was using for my personal hobby projects. And yeah, this is everything. So oh, this talk will have this kind of contents. Uh, I assume you are a beginner. So uh, why Django? We will create a simple project with Django. And I'll tell you some useful libraries I use to create a Django project and some REST framework basics, and how you can contribute to open source, and how you can deploy your project on a server 
uh, because uh, at the end it will be on server and somebody has to use it. So if you search Django on Google, it got better actually. Three years, two years ago there was no Django logo. It was all <laughs> this kind of thing. So many Koreans were confused also. So yeah, in Korean it's called Django, but I say Django, so yeah, it's a little differently pronounced. Uh, and never is still same. <laughs> so if you search on never image search, so it's all, uh, there is no logo. So I think Google AI got better. Yeah, it learned from you. Uh, so what is Django? Uh, this is my definition of Django. Uh, I have a project, right? I have a deadline. So, so like I want to finish some project very quickly and I'm working with my product manager or some person who don't want to change HTML, CSS or put in some code. So I want to make some admin interface for him. So, so Django was also yeah, made for uh, the news reporters. So they wanted to report news in short time using an in admin interface, not changing HTML, CSS or the UI and everything. So, um, and then yeah, it 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 just evolved over the years, and yeah, it changed so much. So, uh, why Django? Or oh, it's been there for more than ten years now. Uh, so it's it's stable. Yeah, it's easy to code, maintain, and extend. Um, easy to deploy also nowadays on every server which supports Python. You can deploy uh, Django. And there are so many open source libraries. So, uh, so why did I choose Django? Uh, before starting Django, actually I tried many languages. Uh, our first project in Korea was with ASP.NET and it was with the Vietnamese friend and I didn't know what he was doing. So I just, yeah, like checking Google and just searching and trying to make something. Uh, and then I did some PHP for one and a half year and did some express uh, but at that time i tried django or oh, it seems a little difficult to me because it's a very complete web framework it's not for absolute beginners sometimes so sometimes it has a lot of complexity uh, yeah but later i found django to be very flexible and powerful because you can customize a lot of things there so you can override a lot of default functionalities and it has a built-in authorization accounts because every time you make an app or website that's the one th worry you have so django has it by default and so ideal for microservices uh, uh, actually two months ago i made a website for my company for vr uh, services so it was like a vr football uh, it was a world, uh, under 20 world cup in korea um, Katie was trying the VR services, so, so they needed a simple admin page through which they can put the link when there is a match and they can like uh, change the status to like Kyonggi Jung, like it's uh, uh, this time maybe there is no match, this time there is match, so you can check it. So uh, I made that website with Django and we just use WebView for mobile because once you click on the link, you just start the player, so you start watching the match. So it's ideal for small websites in short time also, and also for REST APIs. And yeah, if you are the only developer of your project, so I recommend Django as backend for your mobile apps because that's why I started using Django. Uh, I was a mobile developer for a long time, and I used Django to make the APIs, REST APIs, and just do everything by myself. Don't depend on backend developers. Uh, so why did I choose Python Django? Because it has no semicolon. Yeah, so this is one of the, uh, yeah, just a joke, yeah. But it's true sometimes. Uh, so, so I want to give you an overview of request response cycle of Django. But later, I'll come back to this slide. Uh, so, so you see that you have, a, this is your client where you put some URL. It comes to server, server can be Nginx or Apache. And then you have the WSGI interface through which you send like request to Django. So, so you have this file already in Django. Then you have the request middleware which like 
comes to this urls.py which parse your url and yeah it sends to the appropriate view so view has view is more like a controller which you yeah, fetch data from your database and then it renders out to template so template can be html yeah and then you get a response back so users see the html page appearing uh, so the prerequisites for django in the modern world i, I mean today i talk so i say use python 3.x that's better uh, so t for today's small tutorial also i will i will assume that people have computer with command line maybe command prompt on windows terminal on linux and a code editor so recently i started using visual studio code uh, because i was doing some c sharp development in company and uh, it it's it seems more colorful colorful to me and then i just tried python uh, django or uh, javascript so it was more appealing to me so i'm using visual studio code most of the time but for react native i have some problem using it so i'm using atom atom for that and yeah you need git sometimes if you are deploying to some server yeah and managing it so oh, let's just get started so these are just small videos i prepare um, so i assume yeah people are beginners here if you already know it yeah you can just take a quick look again So you start your uh, project. Before that, you have to create a virtual environment where you will, like install all your requirements. Uh, this is like uh, if if you just sometimes Google, it's very hard. There's so much details out there. So sometimes you miss the point. So it's very simple. You just create a virtual environment, uh, which is part of Python three. But yeah, if you are more fancy, then you can install virtual environment separately also. And I'm doing this on a Mac, so maybe for Linux or Windows, it's slightly different. Uh, and you just create a project, and if you see the project, it will have these kind of files for you uh, initially. Uh, so once we have a project, we want to create some apps for different functionalities. For example, for accounts. Uh, today I choose PyCon lunch because after that we have lunch and Coex is very big. So, so maybe my plan was to like give you some suggestions about lunch places, but I'm not that good with Korean search. So yeah, maybe you can figure out later. Uh, so, so second f like step is to create an app. So I, I created an app food because I'm also hungry now so <laughs> I want to finish and yeah go for lunch and then you run your server so when you run your server yeah you can check like this so yeah your website is there so you didn't write any single line of code but your server is here and yeah it at least you're seeing something uh, but yeah, sometimes yeah, when you see this kind of thing, yeah, your code works and you don't know, and yeah, if it doesn't work, you have no idea also. So let's get into like more. Uh, so first of all, uh, uh, like everybody has different way to code. So I start basically with the URLs uh, .py. So you can see the project folder here uh, and this is the file so there was just one line initially I added one line to point the home page to this food yeah, dot urls and when I come to this food slash urls dot py you can see that I have a views function a method index and in next step I will create this so we come to views.py and we import something yeah some http response i'm not showing like any special html page just sending some response that it works 
So, so when you will execute it, again, you will see something like this. So this is just a simple response you get, uh, nothing fancy, just to see if it works. Uh, so we are talking about food. So uh, we have a restaurant, right? So restaurant can be a model. And uh, once we create a model, we can have some properties of that model. So these are just the imports. Uh, we have a class restaurant, so we use the, uh, we kind of um, extend the default models class in Django, and we create these kind of properties. So you see these are just basics, name, I have some limit, max length, and then I have address, maybe I put the iframe or something, and then I have my image field, and I want to store images here, and I, I said like, yeah, it can be null. Yeah, if you don't choose to upload image, it's okay. And I have manual tags, publish date, and I have a writer. It can be like the user. So it's just using the Django auth and bringing in that login, logged in user. And yeah, of course, you need this for description. So Python 2 doesn't support Korean, Python 3 supports Korean by default, so, so this will work yeah. for Korean also. So uh, once we create the app, we have to activate it. Um, so first of all, we create, uh, we add in, it in installed apps in the settings. And so there's also a new way to add it, like using app config, so don't get confused. And yeah, so you can add either food or food.apps.foodconfig. Yeah, these are two ways. In Django 1.11, yeah, you can do that. Uh, so now you have to make migrations, the actual database. So this is how you do it. Uh, first of all, uh, I was using image field, so I had to install one more requirement below, uh, which is required. And then I make migration, so it basically creates the scripts. And some advanced users can check what kind of fields are there. Uh, and then you just migrate. So you see that uh, a lot of stuff is from auth also. But you have some food first, uh, like migration done OK also. Uh, so next step is to add some sample data and check. Uh, if your admin or your model works fine. So, so you can do via shell or admin interface. So first you have to create a super user. So you use this command to create a super user and then you start server again, run server and if you go to this site admin slash admin login, you can input something. So yeah, before that, uh, we are going to do some more settings. Um, the one important thing is these static files. So this we will need uh, later on when we will deploy to server also. So you set static root, you set your media root like this. So this media is like when you upload the file, so it will be in the home directory, or maybe it can be the Amazon S3 storage, maybe it can be Azure storage, whatever you want, whatever you, where you want to uh, upload your files. And then you have a media URL. So this is important. And uh, I missed one thing, that's the static URL also. Yeah, that's already by default. And you have to create, you have to add this li these lines in your PyCon lunch uh, urls.py. So uh, in the debug mode or, yeah, the, uh, it can handle the media files. Uh, some, uh, like uh, uh, cloud services like Python Anywhere enables you to put this link in their console. So, so you don't need to add it here manually. Uh, we have to make our app modifiable, uh, modifiable. So we register it in our admin. So these are just a few lines you need. If you want to get fancy, you can have a custom admin. And you start the server again, and then you just log in, and now you can add the restaurant. 
So for example, if you go to admin and add a restaurant, so it will be something like this. So you have a name, you have an address, you add an image file here, and then you have a menu, tags, and a writer. You can select, you save, yeah, it will be there. So, so now, uh, for now, we just created this, uh, like, uh, simple uh, added a model, but we are not showing on the home page, so we have to create some templates. So uh, I made this simple template using CodePen. I use this material uh, design light. Uh, and if I, for example, click on here, I, I can show you. How is it? So it's, yeah, something very simple. It just have a grid. Uh, maybe I, yeah, this kind of dummy data I added, but later I replace it with, uh, internet is a little slow here. Yeah, but it will load something like this. And then uh, I, I copied that file to this folder, food templates, food as index dot html i'm just creating one page now so i don't need base dot html and extend that uh, then i have to render that template using views so yeah i'll get a little more fancy so i'll add render shortcuts here and this is the same index function we saw before and i just added like uh, fetched my data from db and then i have a context so I add this list here, and then I just render it. So we have a request object, same as this one. We have a template, and then we give it a context. Uh, and if we want to see our etched, like a template, so it will be simply the template. The interesting part will be this thing. So you have this Django template language where you can just create a for loop and add all the data. So uh, yeah, there is one more thing. Uh, yeah, sometimes uh, people skip code because it works. Yeah, but yeah, when somebody, sometimes else you are just changing something like in midnight and you forget to add one more thing. So uh, then the test fails and your site is online at 2 a.m. and some friend send you a message, oh, your website is 505, 500 error or 404 error. And then you say, oh, oh my God, I didn't test the code. So I think this is very important testing. It's very simple with Django, very, very simple, and I highly recommend to do it. So we have to write some simple unit tests. We will write for model. We will write for view. Uh, this is uh, like some imports, and we create a restaurant test case. And the, here we just create a client, which will make a request to home page. Here we just added some dummy like data here. And first we're gonna test the model. So we fetch that model uh, like that object. And then we just say, oh, okay, its name should be KFC, yeah. And then you have for index page, for example, now I created an object already in setup, right? So it should find that word here in the home page. So otherwise it will fail. Uh, and then you run tests just very simply. Yeah, this, this is it. So if there is some error, it will tell you right away and you can uh, fix that. Uh, so I, I have like limited time, so I will skip this part, but that's very important. Uh, Papet you use, so, so you can, uh, for Visual Studio Code, you can install some extensions. It can point it out and tell you like your code have some it doesn't meet pep8 or flag8 is a command line you can run and you can see the line number which you have to change so i for this like presentation sample i ran flag8 and it gave me like 15 or 20 <laughs> small minor changes so i did that uh, but there are a couple of still left i don't know how to review that but there should be an end line at the like uh, end of your code and those kind of minor things yeah so I recommend checking out Pep8 and Flag8. Uh, so yeah, this will be the website. Yeah, I'll yeah, show you later also. So I added some uh, restaurants. 
just random, yeah. I got free images, and um, this is how it will look like. Uh, so we will come back to the, the slide I showed earlier. Uh, now you will have a better picture that from where I started and where I ended. So yeah, I started with entering something in Chrome, for example. I assume somebody will come to my website at home page and then the way I like created URLs first, then created the views, model, templates, and then give back the response. So, so if, for example, you want to make a detailed page, you have to do this step again and for any other thing. Um, yeah, so, so people say that, yeah, you don't give me the source code, but you show me a lot of things. So yeah, I will give you the source code. So, so uh, this is the link. Uh, I'll pause for maybe yeah five seconds. Uh, so this has two branches. One is master. Master has very basic code, but if you go to the Azure branch, it will have REST API and some settings for uh, Azure, which you knew, which you need when you deploy it. So so for more advanced users, I recommend checking out the Azure branch. Uh, so. Yeah, there is more always at the end. So this was the Django cupcake tutorial I gave last year at PyCon. It's 100% in Korean also. So uh, you just click on this link yeah, when you get the slides and you can do it. it. It starts from very basic until REST API and continuous integration. And even I have the client apps, iOS and Android, all code is there so you can check out um, in detail. So uh, yeah, I like writing some tutorials just for hobby. Uh, so so yeah, the basic Django was that's it, like which you can use. But there's a lot of external libraries you can use. Uh, for example, Django REST framework, Django all auth, Django REST auth, image kit, animal. Uh, I created a full-fledged website. Uh, for, for a friend I was working together and uh, we were making an iOS app but we needed a backend so I used this library and some more libraries um, for basically creating a website with users, admins, uh, a lot of images so yeah I will explain so, so Django REST framework is very powerful it's web browsable API yeah, which is good at this beginning when you can see like your endpoints, you register, and then it supports OAuth and OAuth2 if you are making REST APIs and somebody else is using your service. And it supports serialization for ORM for your models. And if you don't have a model, you just have forms. Yeah, you can, uh, it supports that also. And it's very easy to implement yeah, it's not difficult. It looks difficult uh, when you go to their website and start the tutorial, but they usually basically go from step one to step two. Like they just start with simple methods and then they go to class-based views. That's how it looks difficult, but it's very simple. And uh, this is their website and it has 8,332 stars. So it's credible. So this is very simple. Like I create a serializer I mentioned um, basically, these are just six lines, maybe, of code, which gives you a REST API endpoint. Uh, I mean, just a starting point. So you have a restaurant serializer. You just use the class meta model, and you just want to include some fields. So I skipped the user field for now because I was not using any authentication kind of thing. So this is just a serializer. And then this is... Um, your view. Uh, no, first of all, you add a uh, you add a URL here, like API list. I want to come in here and then go to this function, and then I add some like uh, uh, import some stuff, and then you see that uh, for now I'm not taking account any post request, but I just added that. So if your request is get so you fetch all your data from db you create a serializer out of it many true so you can have many uh, multiple uh, 
uh, objects and you just return a JSON response. So that's it. So that's your one REST API endpoint. And if I see the output, output will be something like this. So it will have ID, name, address, photo, tag, yeah, something like this. So photo is usually a URL which is hosted on your server or some other server. Uh, and it can be many uh, of these objects also. So once you create a website, uh, you create a REST API. Now you have to create some apps, right? So yeah, I was a mobile developer for a long time, for five years. I create Android apps, iOS apps. Every day I have to start like using um, like Android development. If I use, uh, I have got new laptop, but before I didn't have new laptop, I had to use Android Studio and Xcode together. So sometimes my computer was slow. So I, I realized that there should be something new to create apps, uh, which I just write code once and run on Android and iOS both, because um, um, it bothers me that uh, why I have to write the same code, same logic for both of them. So I started learning React Native, uh, and I prepared this simple tutorial to use uh, this simple app to use the uh, like the existing uh, website we made. Uh, I will show you. So, so if you come in here, I was. So this is the iOS app uh, I made. I can show you like some code here. So this is, this is our uh, React Native code. Uh, if you come in here and see, this is the main folder, and this is the ape.js file, uh, where I have all these imports. Uh, and then you see just a stack navigator. It's more like a navigation. So I have my home screen as the main one and then I have a detailed screen here and I import uh, from components so if I go to components and home so I see that I have this simple code which basically what it does is that it fetches data from API so I have this endpoint uh, where I have the data and it just like set some states and data and then once I get the data I render it to a list. So I use a flat list. It's from React Native Elements. Uh, you can see, uh, I'll share all the links so you can see that. And I just add the data here. For example, um, this is avatar. It's like an image. It's title um, and uh, some custom view where I add like a, a menu or address. And then I have the own press callback where I basically uh, like send this data to the detail view. So this is very simple. It works both for Android and iOS, the same code base. Code base. And then this is my detail view. So it's, it's also very simple. I get the parameters and I just show them, render them. So I wanted to add, add this map view. But yeah, I had to do a little bit more, so I just skipped that. But yeah, it's, it's out there. Uh, somebody has already made it. Uh, it's actually from Airbnb. You can uh, embed a map. So you just use map view, and it will render accordingly if it's on iOS and Android automatically. So you don't need to worry about, like, OK, for iOS, different APIs. For Android, different APIs, like that. And so it all, it all was possible because of uh, uh, the Django REST API. It made my life very easy. Uh, okay, so, so this is simple. For example, I have these restaurants. Uh, I click on here, so I get the detail view. So same happens for Android also. So I couldn't run two simulators together, but yeah, it same happens. And I'll come back to my slides. So Django Auth has like easy way to do authentication and use some social accounts. Uh, you can check uh, in here. Uh, Django REST Auth is based on top of all auth. So if you want REST API endpoints for registering users, like fetching prof uh, some information about user, changing passwords, 
So they have the endpoints already there, so you can use that. I used it for making the iOS app, um, so it was very convenient. Um, and you have image kit because once the user uploads an image, it, it has a big size, so you want to show the thumbnails. So image kit is very popular. Uh, it provides thumbnails of the images, uh, and it's like getting more repetition. And the code is very simple. So you have a main image here, and you just create a thumbnail out of it. So you provide some image specs fields, like for example, resize to fill, format, or some options like quality, and it, it, it creates a thumbnail image for you. Sometimes you want to change this image, you can also do that, but you can create an extra avatar thumbnail like this also. And Django Animal is very useful for sending emails using Django. I used uh, Mailgun actually. Yeah, for sending like some like confirmation of uh, email messages or change of password emails. Uh, so once you do this kind of stuff and use open source, you can contribute to open source also. Uh, always read README. There are some mistakes. I fixed many mistakes in README. <laughs> so I, I got many pull requests for that. Uh, I sent many pull requests for that. And check source code sometimes if you doesn't understand the logic because uh, sometimes uh, developers are better at coding than actually explaining it. So, uh, in, uh, so I, uh, I was testing my website on Azure and um, Pillow uses Pillkit actually. Pillkit has um, some like a, a OS specific function, functions so which was not working on Windows. So it took me a week to figure it out and then I sent a build request there, I fixed it, and now it's officially there. So anyone else using the Azure with Pillow will face no problem uh, and image kit together. So, so you see that yesterday uh, there was one talk like you, you don't use basically, uh, for example, sometimes you use if, sometimes it's better to use try except. So f at first, like I was sending some pull requests with if else statements but I think I learned that try except is the better one. So uh, this code is a little difficult, but it's OS specific. Uh, actually Windows was just, uh, code was drying on Azure somewhere, so it was not creating thumbnail or something, but um, it works fine on Linux or Mac. Uh, and then I started writing some blog posts also. So I wrote one blog post uh, about Django with iOS, explaining how can you make a backend and make the app with it. And yeah, it has like maybe 5,000 views yeah, now. And um, then I write, I got requests for Android also, so I wrote for Android. Now I'll write for React Native. So yeah, there are more blog posts for me to write. And um, it's very important to deploy your website. Uh, I think this takes 80% of your time than the actual development. And many people just say, okay, local is done. But here, the real, your like, um, nerves are checked. And you choose a server, you deploy it, you maintain for a long time. Uh, it's a very hard thing to do. It's not easy. People say it's easy. Yeah, you just click, click, and yeah, maybe you can do it like that. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to explain what is the local version, what is the dev version, what is the production site. Yeah, a lot of things. Uh, and yeah, I, some of my favorite servers are Azure, Python Anywhere, Google App Engine. I don't use AWS so much because I, yeah, I was, uh, I'm better with these, so I didn't use AWS much. Um, so Azure is Windows-based, IS. They have Linux now as beta. Uh, it has an interactive UI. If I, yeah, I have a couple of minutes, so I can maybe yeah, show you quickly. Uh, it's sometimes more convenient uh, to use the GUI, GUI, but it's not convenient to use the command prompt, the same command prompt we don't like sometimes. So, when, so Azure has uh, both option of PowerShell or command prompt. You have to run uh, your commands like that. Uh, deployment of Python Anywhere is very simple. You create a Django app. It has everything installed for you. WSGI setting is there. So you just have to use console and 
pull in your code and yeah and for free version it is just uh, one website you can use for five dollar you can use a, a one a website with a domain uh, so I'll give you a quick Azure demo if you haven't seen it before uh, so this is the Azure portal site uh, if you get a membership of Dev Essentials you can get one uh, one year free Azure account for twenty five dollars per month usage and I my last year was expired so I made a new one so you can do that yeah and uh, you just come in here you create a new app so for example now it has more options uh, for example if you want to start with a boilerplate uh, implementation so you search Python you will see Django here so Django PTVS is the one sometimes you want to get started with if you're the if you're first time but if you already a website out there then you can just uh, deploy your website without going through this. So this is kind of a boilerplate code. You deploy it here, it creates a GitHub repository for you, and you can pull in that code on your computer and start building on top of that. It has all the settings done for you automatically. So I'm going to just create a new one. So I just create a web app. For example, I call it uh, PyCon Lunch. And this thing, I'll just yeah, use everything default, pin to desktop. So yeah, it will create a web app for me. I'll go to home page. Yeah, okay, so it is creating. Uh, meanwhile, I can show you the one I already created. So this is the alpha version. For example, uh, this is the beta version. So here I have the website already. So, yeah, so I will finish very quickly because I don't have much time. Um, okay, so uh, for example, this is the interface. So if you come in here in the deployment op options, you see that uh, I connected uh, GitHub already here. So, so when I, once I push to my master, it automatically fetches do whatever you tell him for example it uh, collects static maybe you can add some testing also and then then it deploys the website automatically so it's sometimes dangerous but sometimes good if you have a release branch and you are okay with all the tests and then uh, the more advanced uh, so one more thing i want to show is application settings yeah this one so here you can have the your kind of uh, uh, what you call the environment variables like debug, false, secret key and everything and it will automatically take care of you. And one last thing I want to show is for example advanced tools. Here you go. Uh, yeah sorry it's asking me for I think yeah there is some problem but yeah if you go in here uh, you will come to a command prompt where you can execute all the Python commands like migrations, create super user, or whatever uh, Pythonic stuff you want to do. Uh, so it's very convenient sometimes. And yeah, and earlier I created the app, so app will be here already. So I can yeah quickly. I think the app didn't create yet. Yeah, it's here. So I just come in here. For example, I go to deployment options. So it gives, gives me a lot of like these options. I go to GitHub. So yeah, GitHub and yeah, it's my personal. So what I can do is I can choose a project here. So I choose this, this website. And then it asks me to select the branch. So I can choose Azure. I just press OK and it will deploy automatically for you. So uh, all the settings uh, are done. Like uh, you have to create some extra settings so you can check later the slides and also the links and you can figure it out. So after some time, yeah, this will be ready. Maybe I can show you at the end. Okay, so let's just wrap it up. Uh, 
Uh, Django is well established web framework, easy to start, develop, and maintain. Uh, tons of open source libraries out there. You can try it out and like choose whatever you want. And it's sometimes simple to deploy also if you just go through the initial part. And a top con candidate for your mobile app backend. And yeah, with this, I would like to yeah thank you all for listening to my presentation. Yeah, and uh, if you have questions, I will be here for five, 10 minutes. You can ask me. And here are some links which you can download from the website. Uh, once you get the slides, you can see the sample code, sample app, uh, some other information. If you want to try Django in home, I also recommend trying the official tutorial. Uh, it's very good. Uh, it's, it has six or seven steps. That's what you do when you make a website. So I highly recommend that. Yeah. Uh, let's just check our website quickly and wrap it up. Uh, yeah, okay, so this may be deployed. <laughs> if it doesn't crash, <laughs> yeah, it will crash because I didn't do migration. So it will show, yeah, I think it, it's not ready yet. It takes five minutes at least. Uh, maybe you can try out during lunch and go to this website. So the working website is this one. Uh, yeah, this one. So here I have the uh, already everything set up, have some uh, sample. The internet is very slow, so <laughs> it will take some time. Maybe I'm connected to Coex or something. No, I'm connected to Chrome. But anyways, yeah, thank you very much for listening. Yeah, it's like this. So, so if you click on the source code, uh, you can go to GitHub and get the source code from there. So thank you very much.